All right, this is the beginning of my presentation. I apologize for the lateness. It's uh, been a unique unit for me. The title is Floss versus Proprietary Software. Floss, of course, meaning free, as in libre, as in freedom, open source software, and why it should be preferred to proprietary software. Now, again, free basically means free as in freedom. Um, I'm just going to go over the uh, the basic philosophy here of free software. Software that is licensed with a share alike license or a copy left license is commonly called free software. Doesn't mean it doesn't cost anything. It usually doesn't, although it can. But it means that you have the freedom to run it anywhere, anytime, no restrictions. There are no licenses saying you can't run it if you're not a nonprofit or you can't run it for research or whatnot. You can study and change the source code. Now notice you can study it, meaning you can have access to it, you can read it, you can change the source code, and you can do anything you want with it. You can also redistribute copies of the source code, even for profit, meaning you can get, say, a program that is close to what you think is a ideal contact list of uh, for sales or whatnot. Modify it, make it better, make it exactly what you think is an ideal contact list or some such, and then sell it. Again, it's free software, so you can give it away or you can sell it. However, anyone else can ask for the source code for that, and you must give it to them because you got it that way. You can re just read it again, modified copies, even for profit. These are the four freedoms that are commonly attributed to free and open source software. If you want to go to the uh, the list here, the uh, location, you can actually, they have a, a very, very good iteration of what all of these really mean legally. All copies must carry the same license. So if you get uh, a word processor like uh, LibreOffice, which is what I'm using for this presentation, you can give it away. You can't say that the copies you give away are no longer free copies or no longer open source. You can't change them anymore. Even if you made changes to it, you can't say that because when you got it, it had this license. So when you provide it to somebody else, it must also have this license that is part of the license. That's the main restriction of the license, actually. And, of course, the license is the compelling reason for people to use free and open source. Um, now, uh, free and open source software is better engineered as a claim. Um, there's a lot of good reasons for it. There's some things, not many, but there's some things in the um, Kaplan Library as well. This is a good website to go to and uh, take a look at. Um, there was a paper written by an uh, individual called The Cathedral and the Bazaar. I highly recommend that being read if you have any real interest in what free and open source software can do, why uh, it does the things it does, if you wind up liking it, how, how can software be this good and not cost anything, and why do people dis you know develop for this. Uh, in lieu of pay very often. Um, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, where good ideas come from is a TED talk that uh, I saw when we actually did uh, one of the reading assignments for one of the earlier units uh, popped up on uh, my list and it was very good. They talked about how collaboration is really where where good ideas come from. You have a portion of an idea, somebody else has a portion of an idea, another person has a portion of an idea, you discuss it. Somebody's head will gel with these these good little seeds and an idea will spring forth, giving the eureka moment. Um, now no one <laughs> can front the kind of brain trust developing floss. Um, currently it's like if you add up all of the programmer hours that would be required typically to write something as big and as comprehensive as 
say just Linux which is the operating system that people usually use for, for open source software not even considering like things like op the LibreOffice which is what I'm using here or any of the design software or any of the scientific software just the operating system would be about 19 billion dollars to create um, and of course collaboration leads directly to innovation it that's just how it happens smart people get together discuss their ideas somebody's gonna have the eureka moment bang new stuff comes out um, why developer floss? Uh, many people have their own reasons. Some people just want to do community service. They have extra ideas rattling around in their head. Maybe um, I've actually developed a little bit for floss. I've done some of the some things in some uh, video programs back in the day. Um, you you use a soft piece of software. You notice something that you it just bugs you a little bit. It's not that big a deal. You've got some extra time you get the source code, you write some things, you submit your changes and they get implemented. Uh, if they're good enough, if they're not good enough then somebody says hey these are a good idea please work on them. Um, programmers are sometimes paid for it for specific things like say the uh, the contact list say you were using a piece of software and it was very close to what you wanted you ran a business you wanted to use that for your business you hire a couple guys, a couple gals, whatever to come in, write the software, make it better, take what you take what comes, improve it. There you go. That's the ecosystem of, of uh, free and open source software. And our paid general programmers, IBM is one of the first large companies to do this. Um, IBM has <laughs> a team of people who scratch their itch. Um, say IBM is uh, running lots of servers which they do they use Linux on their servers which they do and uh, right now one of the big pushes for many years has been to lower power requirements so their programmers specifically have been working with Intel to come up with ways for the operating system for servers which is what IBM does to throttle down unused portions of a server, hard drives, extra processor cores, um, whatnot. Entire racks can be powered down to almost nothing if there's, lo if there's low load in load balance situations thanks to the programmers of IBM. Um, IBM uses Linux, doesn't pay anything for it, it's an open source, it's free so they take it, they install it on their servers. The value to them is that they get to sell servers, that's what they do. Um, so they use this 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 quality <laughs> server software to enable them to sell their servers. It's a really good deal. Sharing is caring. It, this is basically the collaboration. Um, in the TED talk, they go and uh, one of the the stories is they talk about where GPS actually comes from and the um, open collaborative effort that went into creating what we now use as our GPS. It's an amazing thing. Um, well, the World Wide Web is a collaborative open effort. Microsoft um, early on when the web was very young made a lot of inroads to try to proprietary or to to make proprietary elements of the uh, World Wide Web uh, coding, the HTML coding. Luckily, they were unsuccessful. There was uh, there was a lot of ballyhoo about that back then, uh, but it's got to stay open. If it was if it was not open, the internet, the World Wide Web would not be what it is today. Um, that Berkeley School of uh, Innovation, there's an entire uh, f discipline of management called open innovation, based on taking what is uh, conventional wisdom in management adding open source, crowdsource uh, methodology to it and come up with something very unique, something that actually drives business forward in unique ways that cannot be predicted. That's what innovation is. Um, and of course open standards. You, you've got to have open standards. When everybody knows how to build something, the engineering of things just gets better. If everyone's trying to build something differently, um, it, it nothing good comes from that. Too many that's the whole point of too many cooks spoil the soup. Every cook has their way of doing it. When they mix, 
nothing good comes from it. If they all did things the exact same way, or if they all understood things the same way, even if they had different approaches, things might be a little bit better. On the right-hand side there, um, those are some quotes. They're well-known quotes in the um, Linux community. Um, all of them come from the cathedral and the bazaar. Um, given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. Uh, that is probably the biggest deal with collaboration in open source software. Um, software is open. Everyone who wants to can look at the code. Uh, maybe you're a programmer. You're looking for something to scratch your itch. You come across a piece of code. You, you see some loop or some, some decision tree and you look at this and the goblins in your mind, the OCD goblins that programmers seem to be born with, just express themselves and you are forced to rewrite the code to make sense to you. You submit that to the project management upstream. You just email it up there and they look at it. If it's better, your code gets used. It just does. Uh, <laughs> given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. Everyone who programs for, the, for open source looks at all the code. Um, over time, code gets scrutinized again and again and again. And eventually what comes out at the end after, you know, over time, is just great, great bug-free uh, code. One of the things that uh, I said I would do is... Um, I would show that there are the necessary apps for businesses and people to move from proprietary software to open source software. On the left here, we have five programs that are commonly used. Internet Explorer, maybe not so much anymore, but it's still a big deal. Um, Office, Adobe, Photoshop, Illustrator, Outlook for email. There are more, but these are five big ones. And on the right-hand side are the open source analogs to it. Firefox is the number two browser on the uh, internet right now. Chrome, number one. Chrome being an open source effort. Firefox being an open source effort. Chrome has 60% of the market. Firefox has 20 some percent, almost 30%. So basically they've got together almost 90% of the market. Um, internet Explorer has about 8%. It's really sad. GIMP is a close uh, drop-in replacement for Photoshop, not exact. Photoshop is much more powerful. But for most people, GIMP is quite fine. Unless you need to um, edit supermodels on magazines, GIMP will, you know, remove red eye from <laughs> from photos and, and allow you to do great, beautiful art. Inkscape is actually used by a lot of artists. Um, comic book artists love Inkscape. And Thunderbird is an open source client for email, just like Outlook is. Um, Closed source applications written for Windows run on Windows. Applications written for Apple run on Apple. That's just how it goes. Now, in the free and open source software called Linux, in the operating system called GNU Linux that I introduced towards the bottom of this slide, there is a utility called Wine. Wine can be used to run many, not all, but many Windows programs flawlessly. As a matter of fact, some of the some Windows programs run on Linux through Wine, run better on Linux using Wine as a uh, compatibility layer, if you will, than they run natively on Windows. Most specifically games, because the Windows network stack is so bad. Uh, if you have a game that requires low, uh, low latency, uh, running it on Linux through Wine is a good option for you. Um, now, again, there's a FLOSS operating system. Windows is proprietary. It's closed. It's published by Microsoft. OS X is what the Apple operating system is actually called. It's proprietary. It's published by Apple. GNU Linux is what the actual operating system Linux is called. People usually just refer to Linux, but the, the correct name for it is GNU Linux. It's published by many vendors. They all publish their version of it. They all use pretty much the same actual heart, the kernel, but then they add their own desktops, they add their own um, applications that come with the distribution of Linux, some version of uh, LibreOffice usually, Thunderbird, Firefox, or Chrome, 
um, some desktop environment canonical likes to use what they call unity red hat likes gnome novell usually uses gnome or kde um, or uh, one of the other one of the newer ones uh, novell makes zuse linux canonical makes ubuntu linux and red hat makes red hat linux aren't they wonderful um, now again Closed source means you do not see the source code. You couldn't ask Microsoft to say, hey, I want to see the source code for Windows. I, I think I want to try to improve your network stack so it, it doesn't suck so bad. Uh, Microsoft will just never ignore you, or they might say, have a nice day. Uh, if you ask uh, the project management team uh, for uh, the Linux kernel to look at the Linux stack, they'll tell you exactly where to go um, onto GitHub to download the source code and encourage you to do so. Um, again, the philosophy of open source, the philosophy behind the actual license specifically allows you to do that at any time for free. Now again, most floss applications are free, but not all. Um, Usually what will happen is you'll, if the ones that actually cost money, usually the money is actually for updates. Most free and so open source software comes with free updates, but not all. Um, now the, the data type is a big deal. Applications use open files to save their data in. Um, in the EU a few years ago, there was a big deal. Um, this is one of the things that prompted almost all of Europe to start moving towards open source software, specifically GNU Linux as a operating system but LibreOffice as their main office productivity to write documents to communicate to people because the various versions of Star Office, Windows, whether you're using uh, XP, whether you're using an older Windows, a newer Windows, versions of Office aren't communicative with other versions of Office. There's all kinds of problems with it. Some of the uh, smaller countries in Europe were actually using software that's so old um, the file types could not be converted uh, directly from what they were to something new. You couldn't open them with Office or anything and writing code to do so was actually illegal because of copyrights. So you had official documents for some governments that were locked up and could not be opened legally uh, by copyright laws because they're part of the World Trade Organization they've got to respect copyright law. This was a big problem. This prompted them to all begin to move towards free and open source software that allows them to use open uh, archetypes, open file types so they can communicate. They never lose their data. Their data is their data no matter where it is, no matter how it's saved. Again, it's all because of license. And number four there, Floss applications, again, they do all the common tasks. You know, the presentation software presents the uh, word, <laughs> uh, the uh, word processing software does word processing, does spell checking, on the go spell checking, grammar checking, the whole lot list. Um, of course, uh, Microsoft is going to say that uh, Microsoft Office is more featureful, and it is. Um, but a lot of the features people often don't want, sometimes are hidden. you got to love the ribbon, things like that. Um, now, they are platform independent, understand. One of the big deals is, say you uh, are a business and you have a, a printing press. You have a, you, you'd make magazines. This actually happened to me. You work for a company that prints magazines. You're a programmer for them. And they want to migrate towards flaws or towards free and open source software. Well, that's not a problem. Linux might not be able to be an option, so they can't transform the operating system. They might have to stick with Apple, or they might have to stick with an old version of Windows because of the machinery that they have that they need the drivers for. That's fine. You can still use the free and open source applications on either Windows or Macintosh, or new computers that are brought in uh, for the staff to use can run Linux and they all have the exact same software loadout because the software itself is free and open source, runs on almost anything. Even though the operating system beneath it, the thing that lives in your computer that actually runs the software, 
might be very different. The applications you use are the same. It makes things very nice going from one machine to another machine to another machine when, when the applications are, are similar to each other. Okay, so Linux, or GNU Linux, is a free and open source operating system. Now, the big deal about this is that it is stable. It is rock solid stable. Appliances, cars, um, airplanes, um, the Federal Aviation Commission, um, CERN, <coughs> use this. Um, it's everywhere. You don't even know uh, Android devices. Android is a version of Linux. Um, phones typically do not crash. Um, smart TVs, all Samsung smart TVs, most Sony smart TVs have been running Linux for years. TiVos run Linux. Um, it's everywhere, in everything. The, the Almost the entire internet is powered by Linux. The ATMs that run the backbone of the internet run Linux. Um, 97% of the supercomputers of the of the top 500 fastest computers on the planet run Linux. 60% um, of the web servers run Linux. Uh, it's everywhere. Uh, and there's other companies like uh, you might have heard of uh, say Google or is that in the previous slide here? Yeah, uh, Google actually uh, uses free and open source software. Um, again, Linux Linus is law. The reason it's stable, um, it's using mission critical applications where, again, where, you know, the a crash could cost billions of dollars or lives. The New York, the New York Stock Exchange runs Linux, Red Hat Linux specifically. Tokyo Stock Exchange runs Red Hat Linux. CERN runs a version of Linux derived from Debian Linux. The U.S. Department of Defense, uh, the U.S. Army specifically, is Red Hat's largest single customer, the U.S. Army. Um, now, why, do, why would the U.S. Department of Defense use Linux instead of Windows? Um, the Department of Defense for a capitalist nation should use a for-pay operating system, uh, put the money back into the economy. Why would they use free and open source software? Specifically because they can look at the source code, they can audit the source code, they can make sure the source code does not contain a virus. The U.S. Department of Defense in 2007 started to find viruses creeping up in various systems. There was one specific one that was occurring in a drone control system. Um, at that point they decided that they needed to make a move, something that they could audit. Even the US government cannot audit Windows. Can't. So they went to something that they could, that they can trust. As for maturity, um, the, this is a graph here showing the 500 <laughs> top supercomputers on the planet. Um, Linux uses 485 of them, 13 run Unix, which is an older version of... Uh, a, a, Linux was derived from Unix. It's a completely new operating system, uses no Unix code, but it works like Unix. Not surprisingly, Unix still runs pretty fast. Um, not as fast as Linux, nowhere near as fast as Linux. It's, uh, it's an old uh, fuddy-duddy system, I guess you might uh, use. It's a dinosaur, but it's still still used in some places. Two of the 500 supercomputers run Windows, which is great because just a few years ago they had one. So in a matter of like five or six years, they've doubled their presence in the top 500. Good for them. Um, and one of them runs a Unix Linux hybrid. That's a crazy thing. In 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 tech in technical terms, that's a weird thing. Now again, here's the name drop: Google, Twitter, Facebook, Amazon, the Navy, um, all uh, nuclear submarines run Linux right now. Um, U.S. Post Office, New York Stock Exchange, Android, IBM, NASA, all Russian schools. Every Russian school starting in 2007 migrated to Linux. Um, 
67 percent of web servers McDonald's is a huge Linux user um, the laptops in the International Space Station now run Linux <laughs> they used to run Windows XP but there was a problem so now they run Linux um, they have a 3D printer up there now that they can use to uh, to make things when they break that also runs Linux uh, the US Army US Navy um, I didn't link them here the actual uh, citations there's just too many so I have them in the bibliography and of course uh, as I was saying their nations the entire EU um, back in uh, the early 2000s started the migration because of the um, the file type faux pas this was a big deal in IT this this was an earthquake of, of massive proportions where you had countries with their data no one had a, had any qualms that this was their data but they couldn't access their data because the programs that they wanted to use to access their, their data uh, were so old so they had to actually you know find old copies of these old programs to bring the data out so they could print it so they could have somebody retype it on another system to re-enter the data instead of just taking data and moving it from one file type to another file type it was it was it was crazy um, China most of the EU India Russia again see the bibliography Putin is making big waves all of Russia um, every government office agency will be moving towards Linux they're also making their own chips now it's, it's pretty cool for them good on them um, if you understand the size of just China India and Russia you will understand that the scale of adoption of floss software applications and the GNU Linux operating system worldwide is amazing um, the United States is lagging so far behind in this at least it is outside of uh, business in business literally um, floss is a secret or at least it seems to be so the four the four items I said I would uh, be covering here in this video in our last unit was the maturity of free and open source software is it useful does it have the programs that are required to do the job is it stable is it secure I believe through these last 10 slides I've shown that it is um, if I haven't please email me through the uh, through the Kaplan deal I, I'll, I'll direct you to more out, uh, information We've got LibreOffice, we've got GIMP, uh, the GNU Linux operating system, we've got uh, programs to uh, create music, we've got programs to um, do video. I'm, I'm recording this video on a Linux machine using all Linux software. There is no Windows software in use right now. You're watching this entirely from a Linux machine. Um, supercomputers, appliances, again has your TV or fridge crashed lately this is why they can use Linux and appliances because Linux just doesn't crash there are um, stories, anecdotal stories of small businesses who get started and somebody makes a server on some old piece of hardware and they stick it in a closet somewhere and years later somebody wants to do something with the server and they have to find the server they've used it for years and years and years and no one has maintained it, no one has had to reboot it, no one's had to do anything to it. It just runs. And again, <laughs> the U.S. Department of Defense specifically switched because of the security of free and libre open source software. Um, I'm not going to go through the bibliography in the video, but I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Um, peace.